Okay, good morning everybody and you're all very welcome along to the Marine Ireland Industry Network virtual event and um, we would much prefer to be doing a reworld face-to-face event but unfortunately the nature of COVID is such that um, we've got to do them virtually. We would hope to do a face-to-face event in Q4 of this year, um, but it will be before it will be then before we'll be able to do a, a real live event. Um, and of course, the nature of a network is that you know face-to-face events are always much more beneficial and work better than than virtual. But there we are. That's the world we're in at the moment. Um, so this is specifically focused on Galway. We decided to pick a geographic location and have a look at what was happening in the marine sector in that area. Uh, we, we picked Galway. Uh, for anybody who's not familiar with the network, and there may be people joining who, who perhaps don't know what we do, do please have a look at marine-ireland.ie, our website, which was launched back in January. And you will be able to see there um, what we're doing. Um, we've got a directory of companies there. We now have 150 companies in that directory. Um, we have a news section. We have an event section. Um, we um, we basically facilitate collaboration between Irish companies and Irish players in the marine industry sector in Ireland. Um, so we make people aware of other companies, what their capabilities are and so on. We also, through that website, provide a window for external buyers to have a look at Irish capability and get a better understanding. And that's increasingly important for things like offshore wind, where there will be significant players from overseas who will want to understand Irish capability and um, and uh, Irish skill sets in the marine sector. It's uh, the network is supported jointly by Enterprise Ireland and the Marine Institute, uh, but we do always say that this is in not a Marine Institute website or, or network. It's not an Enterprise Ireland network. It is a network for the wider marine industry um, sector in Ireland. And by engaging with it and keeping it vibrant, um, that drives traffic to the website and gives companies exposure. Um, so do please engage, um, visit the website. If you're not in the directory, um, do please join the directory. It's a very simple process to do that. Uh, the back office piece of, of the marine industry and Marine Ireland Industry Network is handled by Blue Eyes Marine. And I do have to give a shout out there to the team. Uh, Mairead, Aoife, Joe and John all will provide um, the very unglamorous back office piece of keeping the uh, website up to date and, and uh, making stuff happen on the website, you know, putting in the events, doing all that, that good uh, heavy lifting behind the scenes. So major thank you to the guys there. Um, so we also, by the way, we have a new facility on the website. We do have a job uh, facility on there. So if you are looking for somebody in the marine sector with a particular skill set or capability, um, do feel free to put that job up on the website and we'll get lots of exposure and we get a lot of that website. Um, just on the logistics of this morning, um, I'm going to run through the program very quickly. I'm going to hand off in a minute to um, Turlock Rafferty from iHub, who will talk about the iHub facilities. And, and I would just say that the guys there are doing the technology piece behind all this. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, that's Michelle Lee and Turlock Rafferty, who are the people in, in iHub looking after us this morning. Um, we then have kind of we've had a quick look at uh, we're going to have a quick look at the big picture around Galway, what's happening. Uh, we're going to have Galway Port on. Brian Sheridan there will be talking about what they've been doing. You probably saw they had a major announcement yesterday, so Brian will be hopefully bring us up to speed on that. And um, we have Maureen Inu from Uderos who will be talking about Park Namara. That's the new incubator space that Port, uh, Uderos are working on. Um, we and they're also going looking at Rock Deal. Uh, potentially with a view to um, repurposing Rossaville for additional uh, areas of the marine sector, including offshore wind. We've got Fabio from the Marine Institute, who's going to be talking about an SBIR project they're doing uh, around mapping seaweed around the coastline using the drone technology. 
We're also going to then have a look, a quick look at innovation and research in Galway. So we have Deirdre Brophy from GMIT talking about what they're working on in the marine space and Jimmy Goggins from NUIG um, talking about what they're working on. Uh, we then have uh, five very quick snapshots of Galway-based companies uh, who are doing some really innovative stuff in the marine space. Uh, we're going to have Rory Casey, who's actually based in iHub. Rory Willow is the CEO of Atlantic Photonic Solutions, a company that's looking at using uh, UV technology to treat sea lice in farm fish. So interesting one there for the agriculture people. Um, we're going to have John Breslin from Blue Wise Marine. Um, John, well known to this parish. Uh, Blue Wise have rebranded and are looking to engage with the industry and provide they're providing new services and new capability. Um, we got Finn Delaney from Geomara. Um, uh, seabed and uh, survey capability, seabed mapping and survey capability. Uh, Finn will be doing, giving us a briefing on what he's been doing. He's down in Foynes actually doing survey work at the moment. We've got Mark McGee from Air Composites. Um, they're doing some work on composite technology for um, blades for both, uh, as I understand it, for turbine systems, um, both in tidal turbines and actually looking also at um, wind turbine systems. And finally, we're going to uh, uh, hear from Brian O'Keefe in Wood PLC. Uh, that company is, is our largest, actually, FDI company in the marine space. And the guys there have been uh, for many years working the oil and gas industry, specifically around risers and riser technology. Um, but they are increasingly looking at offshore wind and in particular floating offshore winds and, and the type of mooring systems that would be required for that technology. So that's the uh, the lineup. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time in there for Q&A, but please do send in Q&A to our comment section and we will get back to you. Uh, if you have a specific question for any of the presenters, we'll get back to you subsequently, but we won't be able to do that this morning. The event is being recorded. Um, so I, I do have to say that for GDPR reasons, but also uh, to make you aware that if there's somebody who's interested in what we've been doing here this morning and wasn't able to attend, we will have a recording available subsequently for people and we put that up on the website. Um, and like I say, uh, behind the technology behind all this is being managed by iHubs, and that's Michelle Lee and Turlock Rafferty. And thank you very much, guys, for doing that. And with that, that's a perfect transition over to Turlock, uh, who will be telling us about iHubs and what they're doing. And he's a short video presentation as well there. So Turlock, I'm handing over to you. Thanks, Liam, and good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of uh, GMIT and the Innovation Hubs, I'd like to welcome you here to the Marine Ireland Industry Network in Galway event. Um, we're very pleased to be able to facilitate this event today uh, from our new Innovation Hubs building here in Galway. Uh, just before I give a little presentation of the iHubs, I'd like to thank Enterprise Ireland, the Marine Institute, uh, my fellow iHub team members, George McCourt, Michelle Lee, uh, today's presenters, and of course, our friends and member of company, uh, Blue Eyes Marine, uh, for this opportunity. Um, as Lee mentioned, this morning's event will focus on innovative marine activities taking place in the Galway region. It will include opportunities in the marine sector, relevant R&D projects, and it'll have snapshots of four companies that are actively involved in the industry. Um, so. Just a little bit of housekeeping before I give my presentation. I'll just ask everybody, if you're not presenting, if you could turn off your mic, uh, that will just prevent any echo. And as Liam said, if you've any Q&A, please by all means put it into the chat and we will get back to you. Um, so for those of people uh, who aren't familiar with the iHubs, I'd like to provide you with just a short presentation. So um, the iHubs have been here in Galway in Mayo for the last uh, 10 plus years. And um, what we do is basically we're essentially an incubator for startup companies. Uh, the majority of them are uh, technology companies. Typically, they have an export focus, and usually they have they're developing some type of disruptive or innovative technology. So we have a number of different uh, services that we provide, as you can see up here on the screen. Uh, we offer space. Um, we can connect people with funding. Um, this is uh, West by Northwest. Uh, for instance, an angel meeting coming up pretty soon. 
Uh, we're pretty well connected with a lot of the VCs and angel investors in the West and also in Ireland and internationally. Um, we do a lot of networking and events like the events today. So um, we can also connect you with people that are fairly well uh, deeply embedded within each of the different sectors and they can hopefully leverage, you can leverage those to help grow your business. Um, as part of G GMIT, um, we can introduce you to a number of different people with um, different levels of um, research expertise in a number of different domains. Uh, we have the Met Center here um, actually within the iHubs um, and they can do things like uh, 3D models, they can do visualization and they can offer a number of different types of uh, medical and engineering technology type services. Um, there's a number of different resources as well in GMIT as well as just ourselves and the iHub team, but we can you can have access to students and graduates in terms of interns. And we also have some masters and PhD programs as well. So if anybody's thinking of maybe doing an innovation voucher or if you're looking to do an innovation partnership, we could facilitate that here. And if we can't do that, we also are a member of a technology gateway, which is an enterprise Ireland program that spans all the IOTs across Ireland. So if we can't um, help you here in GMIT, we can maybe pass you on to some of our fellow institutes across the country. And uh, that's essentially it in terms of the different types of supports. We run a number of different types of startup um, entrepreneurship programs. And one of those was uh, New Frontiers. So Michelle, maybe if you go to the next slide, please. Um, the New Frontiers program has been running now for quite a while. It's the Irish National Entrepreneurship Program for those that are thinking to set up business. Um, it's funded by Enterprise Ireland. Uh, so particularly people that usually apply for these types of courses, usually there's an export focus in terms of the type of business that they have. There may be some IP and we're looking for potentially for high potential startups. So companies that can maybe scale to about 10 people within three years, or they can generate a turnover of about a million euros. So this program is actually currently accepting applications at the moment for phase one, and it's a three phase program. So phase one is the typical kind of business startup program where people can de-risk their business idea and they can get a good feel if they think this, this, the, the, the idea or the, the solution that they have to solve a problem. Um, does it have, I suppose, you know, market credibility and also can it scale and can it actually also support the entrepreneur and is it a high growth entity? Uh, so that would be phase one. And then there's phase two, which is um, funded. And people that uh, get onto the phase two of the program, they would receive some form of a bursary. And also there's a phase three, which is a more kind of a deeper kind of dive into the actual business. So phase two will be where basically uh, we look at some areas of their business in terms of financing, maybe raising money, um, how to put pitches together. And also we connect with, network, with mentors as well. And then on phase three, um, basically it, that's more of a kind of a deeper dive along the same lines as well. Uh, so the New Frontiers program is run out of both our hubs, the hub here in Galway, and we also have another hub as well on the Casabara campus in Mayo. So it's the New Frontiers program. And as you can see here, one of our participants was Rory Casey, who's one of the speakers here this morning. And um, Rory uh, set up a company called Atlantic Photonic Solutions. And um, he'll talk a little bit about that. But Rory, when he stepped off New Frontiers, he also went on to apply for the seed corn competition, which is a national competition. And he was fortunate to win the regional um, category. And then he actually went on and he won the national category as well. So that was massive, I suppose, a financial injection to his company, but also it was great in terms of recognition as well, in terms of what he was doing. And it gave him a lot of visibility to potential investors as well. So the other program we have then is called the Empower Program. You go to the next slide, please, Michelle. And the Empower Program is a program for female entrepreneurs. Um, there's two different um, phases to the Empower program. One is called Empower Start and the other one is Empower Growth. So Empower Start would be for female um, business people that wish to maybe, I suppose, dip their toe. They have a business idea and they want to basically look at maybe seeing is this visible, this business um, idea, is it viable? And um, essentially what the Start program usually takes place over about 10 weeks. And we normally have about 20 females that are selected to, to go on to that, 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 um, that program. It's similar to New Frontiers in terms of phase one, but there's a lot of more female types of supports that maybe females might need um, to try and get their business up and running. And then for women that already have an established business and they wanna try and see if they can scale or maybe look at new markets, or they wanna try and see how they can, I suppose, improve their business in some aspect or another, they can go on to the Empower Grow program. And um, Empower Growth, actually the applications for that just closed there last Friday. But for any females that wish to get into maybe um, setting up their own business, I would encourage them to apply 
to the New Frontiers program. And you can do that by just visiting our website, which is gmit.ie forward slash New Frontiers. Um, you can get you can get all the details there and you can apply. Our own website for the iHubs is just gmitihubs.ie. So now I'm just going to finish off with just a short video um, just on the iHubs itself so you can get an idea of the facility here we have in Galway. And I'd just like to wish everybody uh, an enjoyable um, event this morning. So thanks very much for your time. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Turlock. Um, so that's iHubs there, uh, um, providing incubation space, and um, we're doing the, the tech piece first this morning. So we're now moving on to, I suppose, the big picture of what's happening around Galway, and we're going to start straight away with Brian Sheridan from Galway Port. Uh, big announcement there yesterday. People may have seen it in the news. Um, Brian, handing over to you. The floor is yours, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Liam. Ten minutes is... Uh, is pretty snappy a slot to try and cover because we have a lot to talk about in Galway. And while it's always very exciting here to work in the port, it's particularly exciting in the last uh, month or so and yesterday with all the news that we had to 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 announce. Um, it's great to see John Breslin there from formerly of Smart Bay sitting in the virtual wings with a raft of experience that he brings to bear and under the new banner of Blue Eyes Marine and uh, I, as a former board member of Smart Bay, I know that John is is well poised to be the dude to to uh, grow and develop offshore renewable energy projects. The first slide you see there, thanks Michelle. The first slide you see there is just an overview of the port uh, built in 1840. Uh, they had vision. They this has sustained at this city for 180 years, and in 1585, Galway was the busiest port after London and Bristol. So just think about that, the busiest port after London and Bristol in 1585. So uh, we hope to get back to that, those kind of figures and those that kind of space again. But in that uh, photograph, you can see a large land bank, 17 acres, which the port uh, owns. And uh, this is what was announced yesterday for the visionary uh, development uh, going forward once the port has been uh, developed. The port currently is surrounded on three flanks. Uh, by residential, commercial, the Harbour Hotel is there. Bonham Quay, which was a, the site you might remember during the Volvo Ocean Race, was the race village. We sold that site in 2016, and uh, Bonham Quay is uh, primarily in office development, is at a very advanced stage in the port of state. So the face of the harbour is already begin to begin to change. The second slide, uh, Michelle, uh, it's just a normal day in the port. There's two ships in, one load unloaded logs from Scotland uh, for the Murray Timber Group at a base in Baligar, <clears throat> and the other vessel uh, loading limestone from a quarry in Kong on the Galway Mayo border, uh, used in the glassmaking industry and exporting uh, approximately 60,000 tonnes a year going to the Nordic countries and in the glassmaking industry. Uh, the 1996 Harbours Act gives us the legislative uh, framework to be able to operate and, and manage the port as a semi-state company, which is approximately 40% uh, of our core business. The rest made up of the real estate, which is owned by the port, and uh, a significant income from car parking. The, the next slide, um, Michelle, 
shows what is in the planning stage. And approximately three weeks ago, we did get uh, very strong positive news from Board Planola. Uh, they have written to Minister O'Brien indicating they are of a mind to grant the planning uh, permission for the port expansion in Galway under Article 6.4 of the Habitats Directive. And this is the first time this type of legislation has been uh, uh, pushed forward. We are blazing a trail, pioneering the legislation and probably doing the country a great service by testing this legislation because it's all new, new to Ambor Pranola, certainly new to ourselves. And um, I, I am hearing in the wings that other applications in the marine space are put on hold while the outcome of the Galway application is determined. So uh, future piers and harbours and slipways and what have you in special areas of conservation, uh, I think are on pause until the, the planning comes through. So uh, it's 20 years in the making, first sketches scribbled on the back of a of a cigarette packet, as it were, and it has grew eventually lodging in 2014 with the oral hearing in 2015. So it's been a long road. You can see there it will deliver 660 metres of key at depths of minus 12 metres. So uh, in, in really good position for the deployment of offshore renewable energy devices uh, into, the, into the future. Uh, in 2019, the environmental compensatory measures were submitted uh, as part of the application where you where you put your toe in the water of an SAC, you must give back what you take. And, and that has been finally agreed uh, with Ambor Pernol and the National Parks and Wildlife Service. Final decision, uh, we are fingers and toes crossed. Uh, we are hopeful at the end of the year that we will have an indicator. There may be another public consultation period in, in relation to the environmental compensation. And uh, but yet we don't know. So we're in the lap of the gods in terms of that that part of the process. But there is there is light at the end of the tunnel and it's going to copper fasten and future proof uh, Galway's a maritime city into the future. And uh, while in 1840 they got 180 years out of the port, uh, I'm, I'm mindful that we, we will have delivered the same. In the in the next slide, Michelle, uh, this is uh, here and now. Uh, Marine Technology Hub. We have kept this uh, site 15,500 square metres, which is approximately 3.8 acres, and we've held that in reserve for what we believe, and we've held it there for a number of years, for a Marine Technology Hub. And um, it's right overlooking the waterfront, so a very nice location in the city centre. And we see that as an area of when offshore renewable energy is, out, is rolled out, uh, the O&M operations uh, and maintenance base for uh, offshore wind uh, can happen here. And also for, for fledgling startups in the marine technology space, uh, whatever that may be. So w we are holding that uh, uh, in reserve for that as it comes uh, down the road. The next slide, Michelle, is um, an interesting one in terms of communications. Uh, you see the number of cables primarily coming from the USA to Europe, the AEC, America Europe Connector, as it's called. And a number of years ago, we embarked on getting planning for a cable landing station at the port that's been approved. And the survey was done by the Riley Thomas last year from Iceland to Galway. And in 22, we hope to see the cable uh, laid. It's going to bring a broadband speed 16 million times faster than what we have in the city currently, which is 53 terabytes a second, uh, incredible data speeds. And on that, from that discussions, uh, another cable from Bilbao and Portugal. So essentially that will connect Galway, hardwired Galway to the Far East through Lisbon, uh, Marseille, and then to the Middle East. And uh, it, it will allow a backhaul communication network for the likes of Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, and an access into the European Union. Now that GB has is a third country and the transfer of data over third countries is a no-no. So now you will be able to have high-speed data connectivity into Europe being handled through the port. And we see that as uh, a key piece of infrastructure and, and moving on the agenda in Galway and particularly for the Marine. The next slide, Michelle. 
I'm very conscious of my 10 minutes. We've all seen this slide, so I won't dilly dally on it, other than to say that, you know, we are adjacent to the best and the highest quality um, wind uh, energy in Europe between Slinehead and Acklehead, just round the corner from the port. And uh, so we are looking, clearly looking forward into the future as Galway being a hub for renewable energy. The next slide, Michelle. This is what was launched yesterday. This, uh, the area in blue there is the 17 acres of land that the port owns right in the city centre. And um, we'll, we're not property developers, we're in the business of running ports. And, um, but we are facilitating this uh, and, and realising that uh, valuable asset to pay for uh, the port expansion. Because as you know, we're a semi-state company, we don't get any state aid, we stand alone, we operate and maintain and plan for the future of our own balance sheet. So we are using this asset which will fund the, the, the new port, as, I, as I've mentioned earlier. The city as it is, uh, Galway, uh, really has nowhere to expand but to the water's edge and southwards. And the Port Estate offers the, the city that, that great opportunity because the population of Galway is to grow by 40% in the next 20 years. So it, it Sorry, Brian, grow. one minute to finish, please. Thanks, Liam. It must grow in some, some direction, and that is towards the port. Michelle, the next slide. Uh, this is just a graphic of what may be, and there's, there's a website there for the public to have their view at galway-harbour.com. Uh, and the next slide, Michelle, policy context. context. Alignment is, is, is a great word, and you'll hear us talking about alignment a lot because there's more and more alignment of what we are trying to do in terms of the new port and the vision lands in the port state through the Galway 2020 plan and the rollout and the development of the re four other regional cities to, to create a counterbalance to Dublin. And Michelle, on the next slide, I'll touch on 10T. Uh, we're, uh, Galway is not in the 10T network, but we are moving in that direction. That map will show you clearly there is a gap of 1,500 kilometres between Foynes in the 10T and Derry in the 10T. And I, I drew that map up before um, Brexit. So now Derry is gone from the, um, uh, the European Union. So the west coast of Ireland, it's pretty stark that we don't have a 10T in the European network of ports. So we're working pretty hard uh, to get Galway into the comprehensive network. And the last slide, Michelle, you will see just as a comparison for 10T, similar country of Denmark, similar population, 22 ports in the network and Ireland has five. So clearly, clearly there is something wrong there. And uh, we hope to put Galway and, and we're making strides in, in, in that area to get Galway back into the, the European network for the West, for the West Coast of Ireland. Um, the, the, the matrix of tonnage as, as a measure of how effective ports are doing um, is, we believe, is incorrect. And, it, you know, if you were to consider a port handling five million tonnes of coal flies in the face of the EU Green Deal and the Climate Action Plan, if you compare it to a port who is engaged in renewable and offshore energy. So uh, the, and that's what the 10T was all based around, was all about tonnage. And clearly that's wrong. And I'm glad to report that we're getting some, some traction on that. So to finish up, the port is open for business for the people in the marine sector. And I'd be delighted to take calls offline and in the wings uh, with anybody to talk, particularly in the area of offshore renewable uh, wind. Thanks very much, Liam. That's great. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, yeah, we'll certainly keep uh, an eye on that marine technology hub. We would be very happy to uh, to see the progress on that. Um, somebody seems to be sharing their guys uh, their email screen. Uh, whoever is doing that might take it down, please. Um, we're moving on to Uderos uh, Park Namara. Um, Moira Nienu is going to tell us about the Park Namara project. And also, uh, what's happening around Rossville? Uda Ross are looking at Rossville. Moira, the floor is yours. Thank you, Liam. Um, Michelle, if you can just pull the slides up there, that would be great. 
So, um, for the support to today's session, August, as Lee mentioned, is Mission Mara Enu, Marine Development Executive with Uderas and Geltachta. So, the, the overall objective of Uderas is to ensure that the Irish language remains the main spoken language of the Geltacht and is passed on to future generations. So we do this by funding and fostering a wide range of enterprise development and job creation initiatives and by supporting strategic language, cultural and community based activities. We provide financial incentives in the form of grant aid and non-financial incentives such as leases on our property portfolio. The Geltacht region actually accounts for 25% of the overall coastline but to us, over 85% of the Gaeltop is on the coastline. And as such, when we're devising and implementing strategy and development strategies, the marine resource is considered key to the creation of employment opportunities. So for us, new innovations and successful businesses will come from those who have considered the sustainable development goals and are finding ways to alleviate gaps in the markets. It's about Unpobble, our community. On Kiaid Lunella, the next generation, Achwani Nodera, natural resources, Fostiacht, employment, and Sunskadal, the industry. So, what are the opportunities in Galway? Well, there are loads, anything ranging from fish to marine renewable energy. Adding value to our resources, such as fish and seaweed, can in turn promote development of the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical sector with endless opportunities for natural based products, be it bone graft substrates, supplements to assist diabetes, to bioplastics with staff needed from all different backgrounds. Marine tech, and we have some great companies like Air Composites, who will be presenting later today, who are already operating in this field in the Galway Delta. But what about software development um, that can further assist sustainable development in aquaculture and marine services, such as sensors maybe that can predict an algae bloom? Uh, Michelle, please. <laughs> so I actually came across this image on the Icelandic Ocean Cluster, and it really portrays what we're trying to say here today. Getting as much value from a species is key. So let's not just gut fish anymore. Let's make calcium from their bones cod rose, you know, to oil and collagen for human skin. You know, completing this whole picture requires the potential for waste and byproducts should also be investigated, you know, with particular emphasis on opportunities for circular economy initiatives, essentially reducing waste to a minimum or zero. And seaweed, again, let's aim for zero waste. But did you know that seaweed can be used for materials for clothing and our fuels such as biochar. There are already some great companies operating in the Galway Gaeltof, but seaweed aquaculture will need to accelerate to meet demand for both carbon capture and to aid in reducing methane. A diet that can contain small amount of seaweed will reduce methane emission from belching cows by 82%. And I even read this morning that the same red species of seaweed has been found by a scientist at University of Sunshine Coast in Australia to quadruple the immune response of farmed fish by adding this to their feed. So um, needless to say, a picture paints a thousand words and this global atlas just, just shows us just how appropriate the West Coast is for wind energy development. So we at Uderas, as Leah mentioned, has just hired a group of consultants to look at Rossaville as a strategic hub for the development and support of the offshore wind industry on the west coast of Ireland. Next, Michelle. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Rossaville, the port is actually located at the northern entrance to Galway Bay providing a strategically close access point to offshore wind facilities at the midwest coast of Ireland, you know, from Loophead in the south to Belmullet in the north, with the clear possibilities to serve ports further afield. Planning permission was granted to DAFM to build a deep water quay in 2018, and Uthras actually owns a significant land bank, approximately 20 acres, which is just adjacent to the proposed quay wall. So there's a wide range of activities um, within the development of the offshore wind sector, which will be required, you know, including substantial manufacturing of elements from turbines, blades, foundations, to assembly of foundations, turbines, towers, preparation, assembly of moorings. There'll also be requirements for operations and maintenance services and support services during both construction and operation. 
But Russellville won't act alone. We're hoping to act as a linkage between Galway, Boynes, Killybegs, you know, all acting as this cluster. You know, although down the line, initial thong, now is the time to act. And speaking of clusters, a word that is used more and more recently, Galway is home to an international significant cluster of ICT businesses and creative industry businesses, along with a highly educated, skilled workforce due to NUIG, GMIT and GRETB. But you know, let's bring these all together and show them the benefits of cross-business and cross-sectoral collaborations that could help drive the marine industry in Galway. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with our Port Namar initiative. We believe that through the development of Port Namar, we will drive innovation by creating a platform for cross-business and cross-sectoral collaborations and connecting people with different backgrounds, skills and perspectives. These initiatives will facilitate technical development, translating R&D potential into new products and new international markets. They will generate new spin-off companies and support the overall growth of local SMEs in the marine and renewable sectors. The Port Namara site itself is actually 18 acres and it will give access to high quality seawater and fresh water and um, direct road access with the seafaring you know, community. And within the vicinity, we've got already a high quality of marine cluster. So we went out for expressions of interest in 2018 and just from that and using basic multipliers, we predict 200 direct jobs on site, 400 indirect jobs, approximately 30 million public sector investment and between 30 to 50 million private sector investment. So basically, in summary, we're hoping that Port Namara will act as a strategic hub for the future development of the industry. So again, in 2018, along with our partners in NUIG and GMIT, we won 2 million in REDF funding for a cornerstone facility on Port Namara, a marine innovation and development centre, or the MIDC as we're calling it. And while we're still at planning stage, we're currently recruiting for an MIDC manager to manage and accelerate the work um, on developing the pipeline and support companies in the immediate short term in the local GTEx, either as digital innovation hubs. So the manager will provide business advice to clients and to enterprise trading in the marine sector across all Gulf of regions. So with the emphasis on remote working, it is worth noting that Uthras has a large network of technology hubs across the country and are open for business if you're looking for a seat. Um, so there's absolutely no point talking about opportunities without looking at community acceptance. To me, community participation and acceptance is key in any development, um, to any development, and really the earlier their involvement, the better. Working on marine sector development, I quickly seen, you know, acceptance was quite high, but there was no significant or scientific evidence to show this or to deny it. So as an accountant, fact and figures are extremely important to me. So I quickly undertook um, some work under the watchful eye of Professor Stephen Hines of Simro. Um, to One minute to finish, please, Moira. To understand and overcome public concerns and conducted surveys in Connemara where respondents were asked about their attitudes towards aquaculture and other behaviours such as employment, governance institutions, marine spatial planning, but results were really interesting. For example, aquaculture and example, on average, will be accepted up to high intensities in these waters. And this activity can coexist with other marine related activities, such as tourism, seaweed harvesting, renewable energy, but um, forget about seabed mining. So really, the earlier you start talking to your stakeholders, the better. Um, so I know we rushed and I only touched on a few topics and I could really talk all day about marine sector opportunities. So please get in touch with me or our director, Mark White, who will be more than happy to assist, make connections, and if we can, try and draw you to the Gaelta. Thank you very much, Marie. Uh, brilliant. Um, yeah, great to see the Park Namara um, Incubation Centre progressing. Uh, one of the Really interesting pieces there, I think, is, is that that is a facility which is specifically designed for the marine industry. Um, and, and like Mari says, we'll have things like seawater feeds, freshwater feeds and so on. So really interesting development there. Great to see it.
Um, right, let's move on. Um, we have Fabio Sacchetti um, from Green Institute now. He's going to talk about a SBIR uh, project that they are working on. Just for anybody who isn't familiar with SBIR, this is a, um, to be honest with you, a much underutilized um, uh, support scheme that Enterprise Ireland runs. It is available to public sector bodies who want to look for a particular technology or capability that they feel doesn't exist at the moment or, or they find it very difficult to source. And Enterprise Ireland has supports around that. And what it does is it allows it, that public body to go out to the private sector and look for innovations or capability to solve this particular issue that, that the public body has. Um, so it, it, get in touch with, with me or, or with Wider Enterprise Ireland if, if you're a public entity and you have a particular technology or, or solution you're looking for, uh, like I say, SBI are much underutilized. So with that, handing over to Fabio. Fabio, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lian, and uh, thanks everybody for being here. And thanks, Marie, for introducing the topic of seaweed, which is uh, the core of this presentation. Uh, if Michelle, I can have the slide up. That would be great. Thank you very much. OK, so uh, I will just uh, briefly introduce you to the SBIR project and challenge that we have been uh, uh, managing in the Marine Institute with uh, Enterprise Ireland, and um, I will talk a little bit about the companies that uh, that have been involved in this process and they're currently working on, on it. So if I can get the next slide, please. So just to put that in context, the seaweed, the, the seaweed cultivation market globally, it's about 11 to 14 billion in value in 2020, but it is projected to, to really grow very quickly in the next uh, couple of decades to 60 billion uh, in 2040. And uh, while this is a, you know, Asian dominated market, really, um, there are players in Ireland, in Europe that, uh, that, that play a part. Ireland is actually the, the third the highest producer uh, in Europe behind Norway and France. And on average, uh, every year, about 20 to 40,000 tons of uh, seaweed are, are landed, harvested in Ireland. Uh, the difference is that the Irish seaweed, it, it, it is actually wild seaweed, so it's probably a better value. And it is used, as previously mentioned by Marie, uh, on, on, on many products, on from cosmetics to pharmaceutical, human, animal food. But the reality is that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Every year we see new uses, and uh, as, as mentioned before, on carbon sequestration, for example. So it is a hot topic, and it is important to do it properly. Um, in Ireland, there is about 150 to 300 harvesters at the moment. Some are just local families, small groups harvesting the local uh, uh, beach, but there is also some uh, relatively big um, uh, harvesters on the West Coast. Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, uh, as the industry grows, uh, the uh, level of harvesting grows, it is also important that this is done in a sustainable way because seaweed, as uh, if you've been to Connemara, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Seaweed grows in marine protected areas, in special area conservations. They are key habitats for many species. Uh, so the sustainability must, uh, must underpin the licensing regime uh, for the harvesting. And uh, also a sound scientific advice is, is required in particular in around the topic of how much seaweed there is and how much seaweed you can take annually without distressing, without harming the environment. Um, next slide, please. So this is all um, in relation to policy. This all came to play really uh, a few years ago when uh, seaweed was well documented in the um, National Marine Planning uh, Report. Um, the Marine Institute actually was challenged and tasked with um, a few things, a few important topics trying to understand the methodology, the, the high-tech methodology required to assess the biomass of seaweed and the species of seaweed around the country, and also trying to better understand the socioeconomic aspect around it. The Marine Institute actually started a little bit before 2018. We commissioned um, a PhD study that lasted four years that looked at the methodology, that um, the technical methodology to assess the seaweed um, around the country and also looked at the uh, who can actually do it in, in, in the commercial world. And the, one of the results was that there is no company in Ireland or UK that is specialized in seaweed mapping. Um, yes, there are groups, mostly marine biology or seaweed experts that can go around the country with kayaks, boats or on the beach, take pictures, measure with ruling, but uh, rulers, but really you need to be think bigger, expand and have a solution that can look at, at the bigger picture, do it quickly, do it 
uh, accurately. So then we went back, we looked at more funding, we uh, secured the uh, uh, funding through the European Marine Fisheries Fund, and uh, we also engaged with uh, Enterprise Island, trying to uh, take advantage of the SBIR mechanism, as, as Leon mentioned. Um, next slide, please, uh, Michelle. So Leon already touched on this. The SBAR actually means the Small Business Innovation Research, and it is it is basically a pre-commercial procurement uh, where um, enables organizations like the Marine Institutes to basically stimulate innovation when there is no solution currently available in the market. And um, there, there are different stages, different funding stages, uh, and selection and evaluation stages that make sure that it's kind of a risk management that makes sure that the best companies get uh, the funding. And the important thing to mention is that the companies actually will retain the IP of their software or hardware solution so that they can commercialize it once uh, the SBAR is, is concluded. Uh, next slide, please. So in specific on our own challenge in the Marine Institute, um, it reads like this basically, is the development of a technology focused data acquisition, processing and analytical solution capable of delivering a rapid and caustic effective intertidal species level seaweed distribution assessment at a regional scale. And I put in bold the important keywords. It has to be a rapid, it has to be economically viable. You need to be able to actually do a survey that gives information about each important species, okay? Not just, yes, there is seaweed, no, there is no seaweed. You need to know the species that are there, and it has to be scalable to a regional or national level. Uh, next slide, please. Michelle, thank you. So I have to mention this, it's funded 50-50, uh, uh, Enterprise Island uh, with 150K, and the uh, Marine Institute through the EMFF funding scheme with another 150K, it is managed by the Marine Institute, in particular by the Advanced Mapping Service Group, where I work, which is funded by the um, Department of Communication Climate Action through the Infomar project. OK, um, next slide, please. So just to go to the companies that, uh, that, that are actually currently working on this, last year we launched the tender um, around quarter one, quarter two last year, and uh, seven partnerships, seven um, groups applied. We selected the best three. Uh, which got uh, into phase one, which was a small capital investment. Uh, they did a case study, and uh, the three partnership that 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 were awarded was um, the AAT group. So AAT is the leading uh, partner, uh, but is um is um. So AAT is a company that specialized in uh, drone, uh, fixed wing drone remote sensing using multispectral imaging. They are a spin-off company of Carlo um, Institute of Technology in Carlo. So they partnered with Carlo itself um, as their business development uh, partner. And also they joined with the uh, Aran Island Seaweed, um, which is a small harvesting company in, uh, in the Aran Island. Uh, if you notice in this slide, I put a little red asterisk um, to highlight the companies or the, the groups that are on the on the Galway region. And the uh, other partnership uh, was uh, is the Fathom partnership. So Fathom is a, it's a company, uh, it's a software house company based in Dublin, actually. They specialize in all things about cloud computing, software development, big data crunching algorithms. And they joined forces with uh, the two groups in NUAG, actually, the group of um, the Ryan Institute and uh, also the group of high-end computing in, uh, in, in, in NUG, and also their commercial on the field partner is Aramara Tio, which probably you all know it's on the, on, they're based on the, in Connemara on the West Coast, and they probably are the biggest uh, seaweed harvesters in the country. The third consortia that, um, that uh, uh, applied uh, and was awarded was the one led by Techwork Marine, which is a, a marine company based in Dublin. They specialize on all sorts of things, uh, providing services and products to the marine sector, from oceanography to remote sensing. Uh, they were the leading partner, but they joined up with uh, GeoAerospace, which is a spin-off company of uh, National University of Maynooth. And GeoAerospace, uh, their, spe their speciality is really uh, aerial surveys, remote sensing surveys using drones, airplanes, and uh, customer-based uh, data delivery systems. One and minute to finish, please, Fabio. They also had, um, thank you, uh, a partner in uh, Galway with the Department of Botany. Next slide, please. So they, 
AAT and TechWorks solution, as I said, is uh, based on combining drone surveys with air, um, air, light aircraft surveys to do the detailed surveys, combined with the satellite remote sensing, a lot of data crunching on cloud-based solutions, and also the field-based uh, ground truthing. Uh, next slide, please. The Fathom solution is, is relatively different. It's actually quite different. It's, all, um, it's a software solution embedded in a, an Amazon cloud system. So there's a lot of IT and modeling infrastructure in here that is going to be developed. They grab the best images available from the satellite and they can model and forecast the CV distribution in any specific area. So it's very, very transferable anywhere else in the world as well. Next slide, please. Of the three consortia, two went forward. The AT and the Fathom consortia went forward to the phase two, where we are now. They are getting the contracts sorted at the moment. And they are really looking at now for the next uh, eight to nine months at the scalability, the platform development, the market analysis, and the commercialization, commercialization with the hope to have a final product, a final solution available for tender, for example, for, for next year. And the last slide, please. So really, while the companies at the moment are focusing on uh, cracking the, the, the solutions, uh, joining drones with satellite, with uh, cloud computing, once that they have developed that infrastructure in the context of seaweed, they can really expand this kind of data analytics potential to anything else related to the coastal environment, for example. And as mentioned before, it could be you know, applied to renewable energy development, to uh, pollution, to uh, monitoring migration of species, or uh, algal bloom monitoring, uh, in, both in Ireland and, and abroad. So 10 minutes, a lot of slides. That's pretty much me done for now. If you have any other question, uh, my contacts are on the next slide. Or you can contact me at the Marine Institute. That's great, Fabio. Thank you very much for that. Uh, very very interesting much. point there around um, the the use of that IoT, ICT, comms, communications capability nationally, um, that's certainly something that we're seeing as well in the offshore wind industry, uh, where there's a real demand for that, that capability. And Ireland has good strengths in that area. Um, so it's great to see those being marinized. Um, yeah, around the SBIR, that is an important point that the IP generated in those projects actually rests with the SMEs involved. So that's, that's a crucial point. Well, well spoken there. Uh, okay, let, let's move on um, to innovation and research. We're going to look at GMIT first and then NUIG, and they're going to showcase some of the, uh, what they've been working on for us on the marine sector. So going to GMIT first, Deirdre Brophy. Deirdre, the floor is yours. Thanks, Liam. You can see my screen there. Yeah. OK, um, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the work that we're doing in the Marine and Freshwater Research Centre in GMIT. And hopefully there'll be some um, aspects here that, that might be relevant to um, some of the things that you're working on yourselves. Oh. Is my screen showing properly there? Yes, yeah. we've got yeah, sorry, uh, okay. PR slide up, Deirdre. Deirdre, it's, it's my slides that are showing. Okay, okay, sorry, I just stopped that. Yeah, okay, okay, so. Um, uh, the group can, comprises 22 academic staff from GMIT, around 15 contract researchers, over 30 research postgraduates, and then every year as well we have um, project students, undergraduate and MSc project students who, who spend a few months in the MFRC. Next slide there, please. Some of the facilities that we have in the centre, um, we have, so there's a, a dedicated research facility, um, laboratory and office space. Um, there is molecular and proteomics laboratories, cell culturing and microbiology facilities, um, analytical chemistry facilities. Um, so there's an environmental chemistry lab, including, including mass spectrometry, HPLC, and uh, uh, FTI or spectroscopy as well. And um, we're set up for histology and image analysis. Um, and we also have Ireland's only land-based HPRA authorised marine recirculation facility um, for holding fish. Um, 
And then we also have some field equipment, bioacoustic monitoring equipment. Um, I'll come on to some of the work that we do with that uh, shortly. Um, and drone um, equipment as well that, that we use for, for sampling and surveying populations. Next slide, please. So the focus of our research, um, it's it's very diverse. The Our, our projects span um, a range of different topics, but the, the three themes that they all fit under um, are enabling sustainability, conserving biodiversity and improving productivity. So our researchers are helping to ensure the sustainable management of fisheries and their ecosystems by collecting, analysing and interpreting data. Um, we're helping to conserve biodiversity by assessing the response of aquatic species to human impacts and environmental stresses. And we're um, working with industry to develop innovative technologies to improving productivity in the seafood sector. So I'll give you a kind of a flavour of the, the projects that, that we're working on, um, but it's really just a, a, a very brief snapshot. Uh, next slide there, please. Um, you can find out a bit more um, about our projects um, on the website, uh, MFRC dash gmit.ie. So just some examples, uh, we're currently working with BIM um, to develop uh, vaccines against amoebic gill disease for use in aquaculture. And um, we also have are involved in a number of projects um, through uh, EU funding programs to develop new aquaculture species and products. So, for example, um, Colin Hannan has been working on, on sea urchins and alternative products from sea urchins. Um, we're also working with with BIM and the fishing industry uh, to test fishing net designs um, and to, to test their effectiveness for reducing unwanted catches. So that's contributing to the implementation of the, of the discard ban in, in Ireland. Um, other researchers are, are looking at environmental contaminants and pollutants in water and in animal materials like uh, seabird eggs, for example, and in uh, synthetic materials as well. So there are applications there to environmental health. Um, to conservation and also there's industrial applications and there are companies who who use um, analytical equipment, use our analytical equipment to look for contaminants in synthetic materials. Uh, some of our researchers have been using um, drone technologies um, and developing new methods based on drones to, to sample um, water, for example, or to census populations. Um, and uh, Ian O'Connor and others have been using uh, drone technology to, to census seabird populations. Um, and there is, uh, they, they have been working with um, uh, wind energy companies on that as well, um, where there's an interest to, to, to map um, the species that are that are using areas um, where there's overlap with um, planned uh, wind energy facilities. And finally, then um, the centre is very well known for the work that we do on um, uh, whales and dolphins um, and other marine mammals. Um, and we are part of a, a NEU Interreg project um, that is building a network of um, stations for monitoring um, marine animals uh, of a range of different taxonomic groups. Um, and our group are using acoustic techniques to, to monitor the distribution and habitat use of, of whales, dolphins and porpoises. So we are working with companies there on the development of um, these uh, acoustic technologies as well. Next slide, please. So our funding is, is coming from a range of different national and international sources. Um, we get a lot of our uh, funding from the Marine Institute, uh, from the EPA um, and from government departments. Uh, we've, we've, we're also working with companies, with wind en energy companies um, and um, we working with BIM as well. And then increasingly we're, we're getting funding from international sources, from EU programmes. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of our projects involve international collaboration and are part of EU funding programmes. Next slide, please. And we've seen a lot of growth um, in in our funding uh, our funding base over the last um, five years. Um, and we are we're also seeing steady growth in the number of researchers who are leading these research grants. Um, so uh, this is this is reflecting expansion um, in the MFRC and the in the range of different things that we're doing as well. So the total value of um, projects currently in the center um, is uh, five point five million, and then on top of that, then there's additional funding for for PhD fellowships that isn't captured in that. Next slide, please. Um. And then just looking at uh, the links with, with taught programmes in GMIT, um, originally our research programmes 
we're linked to the our our programs in the marine and freshwater biology area um so a lot of the work kind of arose from that but as the group has expanded and as more staff have have started to link in with the group we're also linking in with um taught programs in agriculture and environmental management and uh, biology and biopharmaceutical science medical science forensic science and analysis and um also the diploma in biopharmaceutical science so this connects us to students on these programs that have a very diverse range of different skills and interests and i think that's well suited to developing kind of small scale projects or pilot projects if companies want to um, use an innovation voucher or work with um, you, you know to do something um, small and, and over a short time point, time period um, I think our students our project students and placement students are well placed to do that so there's scope there both for the the large scale and small scale projects within the MFRC okay uh, next slide please so yeah, that's it. Um, I, I draw your attention to our website where you can find out more about um, the researchers who are working in the centre um, and the various different projects. The, the examples I've given there are really just a, a very brief um, snapshot of what we're doing. Thanks very much. Deirdre, thank you very much. That's great. Um, yeah, good point there around uh, innovation vouchers and those other additional supports. Um, they are readily available to companies um it, it's a great way of a company just starting to get to engage on the research space and and you know sometimes companies not 100 percent sure where to go or how to go about um becoming more innovative and the innovation voucher is, is a very handy way to start that can lead on then to innovation partnerships and so on so it's a good mechanism to start engagement there so great that that's what's happening in gmit um encouraging you again if you have any questions get them into the, the q a and chat facilities and we will follow up on them like i say we don't have the facility to, to be able to answer them at the moment because we're just um the, the timing is too tight for us um but now we're heading to nuig to jamie goggins to hear what jamie has um how far us on what's been happening in nuig and the research capability there jamie over to you sir thanks liam um Shall you gonna share the slides? Yes, we share the slides. Yep. You just say next slide, please. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. No, thanks for, for inviting me. So yeah, loads and loads going on um, in the university. So all I'm gonna have time to do is uh, give a kind of snapshot of a few few example uh, projects and that just to show the capabilities. But just, I suppose, at the, at the highlight, just to say, you know, we, we, love, we love collaborating with industry on, on research innovation projects. Like myself at the moment, I have live projects involving about 50 companies, uh, associations and research technology organizations and that. So about a quarter of those are in, in Ireland. Most of the rest of them are across across Europe. Um, like I've, I've helped secure more than 80 million euro worth of project funding in the last 10 years. Uh, and again, most of those projects are with, with industry. So just, uh, you know, that that's what we like doing and um, that's what we can see we can have big impact by working with with uh, industry and communities and so on uh, so just on the next slide so we have uh so i'm within the the, the ryan institute a lot of my research work go, goes on and uh, i'm also director of research innovation and school of engineering and one of the centers within the ryan institute is the center for ocean um, research and, and exploration uh, in there with the mission to advance knowledge of ocean and its interactions with land atmosphere uh, and and society through excellent inter interdisciplinary research in marine and coastal systems, embracing the UN SDGs in support of national and international strategic priorities. So, you know, a lot of the stuff we do, what's great about having like the Ryan Institute is it brings people from different disciplines together to, you know, to try and address a challenge that, that that's there. Uh, we also have, you know, we're part of the SFI Marai Centre, SFI ICRAG and, and so on, but Marai and ICRAG in particular uh, have a good um, footprint within the, within the marine sector. The world cloud there with the with the um, with the fish is the is from the the work that we do uh, that the group does and you can see the main the main the main um, uh, topic areas there and of course we're you know targeting um, trying to <clears throat> fulfil the targets or help uh, contribute to the targets under SDG fourteen which is life life below water uh, next slide please so within the within that group but within the wider context this was lots of our schools our colleges um different disciplines uh, working in this in this sector so i'm going to kind of try and give a flavor from some of the different schools and sectors uh you know we're a research driven um institution or a research driven university uh so there's masters and uh, undergraduate uh, programs that are at the back of some of this research uh, work as well next slide please 
So the first uh, example I'm given here is um, Wave Resources uh, characterizations. This is done by Stephen Nash and colleagues uh, in there. So basically created a standardized Wave Resource uh, characterization for Galway Bay. So taking 10 years worth of data and been able to um, use a modeled Wave uh, data sets to characterize the Wave Resource at that site uh, in it up to the to the European standards. So effectively, what's what, why would we do that? Well, very useful. Uh, for a test site, for a, a, a wave energy test site, so that you can see uh, what is the, the, the dominant um, periods and, and uh, significant heights of that of that test site uh, in there. And then, but also we've looked at different times of the year. So if you're going to be uh, testing uh, in Galway Bay uh, in springtime or in autumn time, what does that mean? Uh, if you have a, a you know a three month window, what does it mean for the overall life of it? And then what about if you want to design your wave energy converter for Galway Bay? What scale should you have it at if you didn't want to bring it up to the Amets test site up in North Mayo after that? So we have a scale in there by looking at what periods of the year are you going to test for? Are you looking for extreme conditions or operation conditions and so on? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, my core work, I suppose, is I'm a structural engineer. Uh, that's what I, I, I do. That's what I did before I came into the university. So I, I run this large structures test lab. So you see the picture there on the right. That's a, a 30 meter wind blade that was manufactured by Air Composites. So I know Mark is going to speak later on. And you see in the background, uh, William Finnegan is there just going to show you the scale. Yeah, so we have very advanced um, test uh, facilities there. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, and over the last few years, we've been using it uh, predominantly for testing tidal and offshore wind uh, turbines. So we've done a couple of different uh, projects with Shuttle a Hydro, which is a German company. So that's a tidal energy uh, device there that we've tested the blade to its 20 year equivalent life. So we do accelerated testing. Rather than waiting for 20 years or to see how long the blade will last in the water, uh, we tested under accelerated loading in, in, in the in the uh, lab ORPC uh, in the middle. So those uh, files on that, it's a it's a river turbine. Uh, the files are manufactured out in Connemara by Aerocompsis. We did some testing in our lab and then they shipped off um, to Alaska and they're now providing clean energy to Alaska where they were reliant on diesel powered uh, machines after that. So we're just starting another uh, project um, with them, a, a fast tackle innovation project. Uh, to now incorporate recycled material uh, into those blades uh, in there. Uh, Open Hydro, we did before, we worked with them before they, they went burst. Uh, Orbital Marine Power, um, very interesting Scottish uh, company. So they have a floating tidal device there. So you can see the yellow picture. Um, they've just um, towed up their device up to the Orkney Islands is ready for uh, deployment up there as well. So it's a two megawatt uh, device. Each of the uh, arms going down into the water there have one megawatt uh, turbine on it. The blade on the on the picture that we show there is in our test lab. Uh, we tested that. Um, if you just want to go on to the next slide, please. We tested that uh, last year uh, in our lab. Uh, we tested under static load, so it's manufactured by our composites and then tested in our lab. So we put a an equivalent of 100 tons uh, load on it, which is the equivalent of a 10 double decker buses on it. So it's the largest ever reported load on a on a tidal turbine blade. And then we tested it to its equivalent 20 year life. So nobody has ever done this in the world before. So it's you know we're world we're definitely world leading uh, in this area. We also uh, have our own in-house software that we've developed that we actually design up uh, these blades. We can do uh, uncertainty analysis on them and so on. So we, we can definitely say we're world leading in that area. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Um, just shifting over then to my colleague Rory Monaghan, who's also in engineering, uh, but also uh, other colleagues like Paul Farrell, who's in uh, chemistry, and Tom van Rinsberg, who's in economics. So these guys are working on, on green hydrogen and value chains for the marine e economy. So if you kind of look there at this at all those different projects that we've given up as examples, you see that most of them are with different communities. So they're either with island communities, which say the Aran Islands has been a replica island. Uh, you have Majorca there as a green hub. So it's all about green hydrogen uh, in there. You have value chains in Ireland, the UK and Germany. So from Gencom, so they're, they're kind of large projects, mainly funded through the European European Union. Uh, in there. So there's a great opportunity here, for example, in Galway, where you have uh, excess wind power from the Galway uh, Wind Park uh, in there. Uh, that thing could be used um, to create green hydrogen um, at the port, and then that green hydrogen thing could be used to power our buses and our trains uh, locally within Galway. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Simru was mentioned uh, earlier, so Stephen Hines, Professor Stephen Hines, uh, the Social Economic Marine uh, Research Unit. Uh, in the university, and that was established with the objective of expanding marine social economic research capabilities in Ireland. Uh, and, and I suppose they're best known for the uh, Ireland's uh, Ocean Economy uh, Report uh, in there that's used at, at international, national, and, and regional levels. Uh, in there. Next slide, please. 
Yeah, so, it's, uh, so you have, so I give a flavor of some engineering uh, and science, uh, some in terms of the economics uh, side of things. And then I thought I'd pull out this one as another example where, you know, blue space for health and well being. So, you know, <laughs> the vast oceans or, or, or waters uh, in there, you know, absolutely brilliant for health, health and well being. So, colleagues uh, in there, like uh, Eski, Geisha, Christine, and, and uh, Katrina, and so on, are looking there at those spaces and investigating the links between. Uh, our environment, our health, our well-being, and uh, social economic status. Uh, next slide, please. Our, you know, one of the biggest groups, I suppose, in terms of uh, research activity around the, the marine uh, space comes from our School of Natural Science. And I've just pulled out a few examples uh, here. But if we take, you know, sustainable management of, of marine bio resources there, uh, in there, so. You're looking at the biodiscovery, the biotechnology potential of marine uh, organisms, especially looking at invertebrates like sponges, corals, algae, microalgae, uh, cyan bacteria, and so on in there. Um, and then we look at you know the impact of say uh, climate change uh, in there on our, on our oceans, so acidification of our oceans, uh, the effects of global change and on, on the physical and biological factors and driving distribution of of different organisms and so on uh, in there. So. Taking that into account and looking at the likes of evolution and ecology uh, in there. Uh, genetics is obviously very important. So if we're talking about uh, seaweed was mentioned earlier on, uh, we look about high yield seaweed uh, in there and the genetics behind that that can uh, make it more economically feasible and environmentally sustainable manner. Uh, but also, you know, we have a uh, huge resource off the, the west coast of Ireland in terms of the deep sea uh, and exploring and conserving deep sea genetic resources. So I think you know, the, our colleagues in, in the university in Inuit Galway are the largest users of the, the um, research sea vessels uh, in there going out doing lots of lots of um, field studies. Obviously sustainable fisheries, marine ec ec ecological restoration and uh, and looking at the, the nitrogen dynamics and, and so on. And next slide. Please. One minute to finish, please, Jamie. Yep. Uh, if I look at my colleagues in, in so in the uh, College of Arts and Humanities and School of Geography, uh, across the right uh, range of, of work that, that that's been done there, from coastal processes and landforms, you know, wave, wind, and tide, coastal management strategies. Uh, so, for example, looking at our beaches, the sands, uh, the dunes, uh, and that, trying to understand the dynamics that's going on there, uh, but then also trying to conserve and manage those, uh, monitoring, observation, you know, using things like. Uh, earth observation and GIS, marine spatial planning, uh, biodiversity, and so on uh, in there. Last slide. So that's kind of just a very quick uh, run through. I mean, I could have put in loads and loads of other uh, examples from different things, but just to kind of give a flavor. And I suppose we are open for um, you know anyone that's interested, give me a shout and I'll try and put you in contact with the right person in terms of who could help you uh, in terms of your, your ideas or your need. OK, thanks a lot. Jamie, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Some really interesting stuff in there. Um, fully agree on the orbital power technology. That's a really interesting one um, headed up to Orkney to be tested up there at the moment. Um, and great to see an Irish involvement in that project. Um, you did mention open hydro there as well and the fact that it was gone. And yes, that was a huge loss to us on the marine side. But out of, I do think that out of, of that came two great companies that are now really innovative in the marine space in Ireland, X-Ocean, who everybody will know as that unmanned surface vessel technology. Um, but we also have Dublin Offshore Consultants um, who have a lot of skill sets that are very valuable for the offshore wind industry. So um, a lot happening in, the, um, in that space from the skill sets that came out of Open Hydro. Um, green hydrogen as well, great, uh, yeah, great that you mentioned that it's it's a very obvious fit with uh, offshore wind um, and indeed onshore wind. And uh, people will have seen that, that announcement uh, just a couple of weeks back from uh, ESB and Equinor around the repurposing of the Money Point site for uh, both floating offshore wind and green hydrogen. So really, really interesting development there. Um, okay, we're going to move on to the companies now, and we're just doing quick five minute snapshots of companies and their capabilities and uh, innovations they're working on. We're going to start with Rory Casey, who's actually there in iHub. Rory is CEO of Atlantic Photonic Solutions, and he's working on UV treatment of fish lice uh, in farm salmon. Rory, floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Liam. Um, if you can bring up the slides there, please, Michelle. So Rory Casey is my name. I'm the founder and MD of APS. APS is Atlantic Photonic Solutions. 
So photonics is a, the science of light. So we use, we engineer light to do things. And our first business case is to use light to remove parasites from hosts. And the first case is sea lice from farm salmon. So the next slide, please, Michelle. So salmon farming, uh, next slide, please. How, how important is it? Well, it's salmon are the feed conversion champions. So uh, one kilo of salmon of feed produces one kilo of, uh, it takes 10 kilos to produce one kilo of beef, two kilos of feed for one kilo of chicken, one for one salmon. So it's the most efficient. And if we look at space, to get a million kilos of beef, you need three and a half thousand hectares to get a million kilos of salmon. You need 1.6 hectares of ocean. Of course, there's a three dimensional element there, but it just shows how efficient it is. So uh, next slide, please. The problem with it is sea lice, and the sea lice are an ectoparasite. They breed very quickly, they have a short life cycle, depending on the water temperature. The females can uh, lay up to a thousand eggs. They damage the salmon, and the cost of the sea lice problem is about a, estimated as a billion euros per annum. Next slide, please. So our, our solution is photolyzer. So we will pass the fish from the pen, pass them through our device, put on the lights, knock off the lights, and then pass them back in to the pen again. Next slide, please. So there are alternative treatments, obviously, with, uh, with an industry that size. They sort of fall into the uh, chemical, the mechanical, and the biological. Uh, so there's, there's, a, there's pros and cons for each of them. Um, a lot of them damage the fish, which, which uh, fish welfare is, is the main problem. The chemicals have also sort of reached their end game where the sea lice have built up a resistance to them. Next slide, please. So our journey so far, we, we started in uh, 2018 with the initial idea, filed the patent, uh, achieved proof of concept. We're now to the lab in, in, in Galway from the fish farms, bringing the samples of lice to try and find the sweet spot wavelength. In uh, November last year, we won the seed corn competition, and that allowed us then to do some fish trials. So we're able to prove that we don't damage the salmon. And then at the end of last year, we got some EMFF funding, which has allowed us to kick on. So our funding journey has started sort of, we, we, we've shaken pretty much every bush that's out there. So Southwest Mayo leader company, NUIG, helped us with innovation vouchers from uh, Enterprise Ireland. I was on the New Frontiers program, which has started again. Turlock mentioned it, fantastic program, Tony O'Kelly. Uh, then we did seed corn, which is really good preparation for the, the European pitch. And Uzros and Gaelic and a big call out there to Sean O'Kushtla and uh, Mark White for their support uh, from Uzros. So next slide, please. So we've we've gone from concept to prototype. So the first one there, the concept is a four lamp system, a lamp sort of north, south, east, west. And there's the, the prototype underneath. And then we moved quickly to an eight lamp and there's the eight lamp prototype. So we're getting very good results. Next slide, please. Our team at the moment, we've got uh, Kieran Guy and, and Laura on the photonic side. We've got Kevin Murphy on the validation scientist, John Gertie, Noreen and myself. So next slide, please. So in summary, uh, next slide, please. What we've got is a innovative fish friendly technology that works. It's working. Uh, we're at a very small level. We're at one fish at the moment. We need to scale it up. We've identified a, a major problem in the global market. We've secured the IP. We've assembled a team and we've got commercialization strategy and funding in place for the next three years. So we are ready to move in, move up through the gears. Uh, that's it, I think. Thanks very much for your attention. And if you want to give me a shout, there's my details. Uh, I'm very interested in talking to anybody that wants to talk to me. Thank you. Rory, that's great. Thank you very much for that. A really interesting project. Anybody who's in the aquaculture industry knows how big an issue fish lice are and, and how much they torment the industry. So any new technology in that space, I would imagine, would be very welcome. Uh, let's move on to John Breslin. John, Blue Eyes Marine, well known to this parish. You have the floor, John. I don't have any sound from you, John. OK, what we'll do, uh, uh, Michelle, is we'll let the guys there get sorted. And we might move on to Giomara and Finn Delaney, if that's OK. Can we, um, Finn, can you unmute? And we might get Finn's slides up and we'll come back to John Brazil. Okay oh, are you? OK, right, great. Sorry. 
Sorry, <laughs> I've confused everybody now. Finn. Sorry, thanks, Hold Liam. On. Thanks, everybody. Sorry about oh, that. Uh, yeah, you're good. You can hear me okay. Michelle, can you yes, pull up the slides? Great stuff. So look, I just uh, want to use the opportunity to introduce Blue Eyes Marine. Uh, you can pull up the next slide, Michelle. Uh, most of you will know us as being uh, Smart Bay Ireland. So just to explain, we transitioned to Blue Eyes Marine. Uh, we recognise the, the skills and experience that we've gained through managing the test site since 2012. And we wanted to diversify our activities. So we needed to rename the company away from the, the test site. We're still managing the uh, and supporting the management of the test site, uh, but we're also expanding our services. So what we're doing is we're helping developers of technology and project developers who want to install wind, wave, floating solar, tidal, airborne wind technologies to identify sites in Ireland and to uh, help them with consenting. So we're helping basically to deliver blue economy projects in Ireland. Brian and others have mentioned there's a huge opportunity in Ireland as we start to look towards the, the marine to, uh, to reach our net zero, zero targets. And really there's an awful lot to working in the marine. And next slide, please in terms of the, the, the harshness of the environment, the health and safety requirements. So we've got four principal services that we're offering. Uh, marine infrastructure management, we're helping the Marine Institute and SCI uh, with the Smart Bay test site and also the early stage groundwork for the Atlantic Marine Energy test site as well. Uh, we've got a, a range of support services for the offshore renewable energy industry. We support marketing engagement initiatives for government. And an example is our support, as Liam mentioned, for the uh, Marine Ireland Industry Network. And then we provide funding support as well. Next slide, please, Michelle. So in terms of marine infrastructure management, uh, I have a background in managing the National Research Vessel Fleet and managing multiple vessels in P&O. So what we did when we started uh, running the test site is we established HSEQ, Health, Safety, Environment and Quality uh, procedures. We've got accreditation under the three standards and we maintain that. We developed standard operating procedures and access procedures for vessels and devices being deployed on the site. Uh, we've learned that uh, community engagement is key and that's something that's going to be very important as we start to uh, develop projects, uh, say fixed wind projects, floating wind projects, how we engage with communities and how we explain what we're doing. And for the test site, we, we're constantly updating the community via social media in terms of activities. Our, our um, community engagement coordinator, Joe, is based in Spittle as well. We develop site access contracts. We select uh, and we've worked on uh, procedures for vetting vessels and dive companies. Uh, we undertake marketing and promotion and maintain a pipeline of developers of technologies. To date, we've, uh, we've coordinated and secured almost and delivered almost 80 projects at the test site, ranging from the larger 1.1 million, 1.5 million projects involving wave energy devices to smaller projects involving the deployment of connectors, coatings, materials, communication systems. Um, we provide project management then when we secure those, uh, those projects and also uh, we provide reporting as KPIs. Next slide, please, Michelle. So in terms of the offshore renewable energy industry, uh, there's two elements of support. There's the developers of um, fixed wind farms, uh, the utility companies, the project developers, and then there's the emerging technology developers. And again, there's similar types of supports because we're bringing the experience that we've gained through uh, Smart Bay and running that. And again, we're helping developers identify suitable sites and select those sites. Uh, we'll coordinate resource assessment and um, environmental monitoring surveys. Again, we've uh, experienced with consenting and permitting. We're helping developers uh, get consent for various projects. Public consultation and community engagement is a key factor as well. Um, we're talking to developers about helping them develop ways of assessing fish stocks before, during and after uh, wind farm uh, installation. So again, to try and get an idea of what is the state of play with maybe it's a crab uh, fishery or a lobster fishery or a fin fish fishery before and during and after. And again, vessel selection. So we will engage vessels on behalf of our clients, make sure they're safe. We're working with our partners, AG and Marine, who are on this call, uh, those guys will be uh, helping us to inspect and, vest, and vet vessels as well. And again, HSEQ uh, to ISO standards. Next uh, slide, please, Michelle. 
So finally, then the other uh, area of support is we're working with particularly the emerging technology developers to actually um, identify suitable funding. Now, that could be grant funding, that could be debt funding, that could be equity funding. Uh, we've helped Simply Blue in the past with this, and we're pushing this uh, service to other developers. And we will then help also build a consortium of correct partners or suitable partners. We're involved in a total of 16 uh, European projects. So we have a big network around Europe of uh, academics and industry partners. We will help with the writing of the proposal, the preparing of the grant application, and then coordinating the proposal and managing the, uh, the project. Uh, we will use our extensive network, as I said, so listen, to finish off this uh, presentation, I'd like to thank Turlock for hosting it. This is a fabulous facility. We're finding ourselves part of an innovation ecosystem here in the iHub, which is really, really excellent. We're working with Ian O'Connor and Deirdre Bofi and their team as well to look at the, uh, the use of autonomous technologies for carrying out environmental monitoring. So by being, I suppose, present in the iHub, we have access to research in a, a excellent state-of-the-art office facilities, but also research uh, performers. And the last thing to say as well, we've just been uh, uh, awarded high potential startup status by Enterprise Ireland. So again, that puts on the, us on the road to funding. We're applying for innovation vouchers. We'll move on to innovation partnerships, and we're looking at agile innovation funds. So watch this space. We're developing our website as well, which will go live quite shortly. Uh, and again, that will provide more information on our products and services. Thanks, Liam, and thanks everyone for listening. That's great. Thank you, John. Um, great. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can see the Blue Eyes Marine there repositioning themselves in the sector. Um, right, let's move on to Giamara, uh, Finn Delaney. Sorry, Finn, for, for almost throwing you under the bus there earlier. Um, but let's hear what you've got. Thanks, Lee. No problem. Um, uh, I suppose just to start with, uh, next slide, please. We'll start with the second slide. Uh, we, we, uh, Finn is my name. Um, we have a small, a small, uh, uh, small but growing, growing um, high resolution service based here in, here in Port 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 um, We have a, a growing team with five full time staff now at this stage, uh, with five full time contractors as well. Uh, one of the things that we find uh, we need to put a lot of effort into the training side of things, and so far this year, uh, we've had training from our uh, software providers, QPS uh, in Quincy and Chimera and Aplanix and SonarWiz. Uh, and also one of our surveyors has just finished um, his IHO Cat B training uh, with Skill Trade in Holland. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, what we do, we do some hydrography, some geophysics. We also obviously get involved in the data processing side of things. Um, and we do some small marine archaeology. Uh, some of the some of the nice pretty pictures around there. Um, there's a, a a water cable for Yorkshire Water up in the top right hand corner. Uh, it's simply just a bathymet bathymetric image, uh, and down at the bottom left we have uh, we have the turning circle down at Foynes. Uh, on the right hand side with the uh, an Olympus uh, the Olympus an Odom class um, submarine which we found the side scan survey and the approaches to Villetta Harbour. So that's what we're into anything to do with hydrography or geophysics. So next slide, please. Um, we own and operate uh, our own full suite of survey equipment. So we have uh, sub-bottom profilers, side scan sonars, magnetometers. Um, but I suppose our workhorse is the, is the, uh, is the, is the multi-beam system. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art Reson T50. Next slide, please. Which has recently gotten an upgrade uh, to 10, 24 beams. And all that means is we get higher hit counts and higher resolution. Uh, on the top right hand corner, we have uh, some backscatter, which we get from the T50 as well as the bathymetry. So when you combine the two, you overlay the backscatter on top of the bathymetry data, your lovely 3D model of the uh, sea surfaces, which is useful for, uh, for, for many applications. One of, the, one of the things we really wanted to push in 2020 here in Geomera was uh, using this really high quality point cloud data uh, to a better extent for our clients. So we've developed a, um, an internet based, an internet based um, uh, approach uh, where in the bottom left hand corner, you can see our, our lovely point cloud XYZ data uh, can be interrogated by our clients online without the need for uh, big data transfers or uh, expensive software. Um, so next slide, please. 
Um, so Brian Sheridan was talking about the Iris cable that came into Galway Bay, which is due to come into Galway Bay. We were involved with the very near shore survey of that. We tied in with EGS from the 15 metres. We brought it right the way into Valley Lahan, doing a full suite of mags, so bottom multi-beam um, and side scan surveys. Uh, our PDS software allows us to do some seabed classification uh, from the backscatter data out of our, out of our T50. Uh, so that's a, an automatically ge generated seabed classification of that very near shore bit just off of uh, off Ballylohan Beach there. Uh, we find it really useful um, and it's a nice innovative way of using our backscatter data. Next slide, please. Um, so if you could just play the, uh, play the little video, uh, Michelle, hopefully the, vid it, hopefully the sound won't happen. Um, We've recently acquired this PicoTech uh, 130 multi-beam system, which comes on its own catamaran. Here it is working for the Port of London Authority. Um, and we're, we're hoping to deploy it uh, for very near shore surveys, lakes, harbors, rivers, um, uh, and maybe some floodplain surveys as well. Uh, we're really looking forward to playing with it. Uh, we're hoping to throw it into Limerick Dock later uh, this afternoon. Um, next slide, please. Oh, sorry, I must say, if we could go back to the Picotech, we also um, we, we, we received some funding from our local enterprise office here in Galway to support us in the purchase of that. Um, next slide, please. Um, so again, the, the, the areas that we work in, uh, ports and harbours, obviously, um, the likes of Foynes and Ross Lair. Um, we also do cable and pipeline service uh, down the bottom left there. You see, the, the again, the the, from 15 metres into Ballylaw, and that's the multi-beam data set that uh, we collected uh, towards the end of last summer in Galway Bay. Um, we also work on large-scale area surveys, such as we completed a survey of the full of Loch Derg, that's a good few years ago, and we also work on the offshore wind farms in the UK. Um, so, next slide, please. One minute to finish, please, Finn. Uh, so we were really, thanks Liam, we were really delighted at the end of last year to work for our clients MDM uh, down at, uh, down at um, Kilmore Quay, where we did a full spread cable route survey from Kilmore Quay out to the 12 nautical mile limit. Um, it was a full Irish team, uh, we worked with our partners Fastness Shipping, uh, and we did a side scan, so bottom mag survey, as I said, all the way out to the 12 nautical mile limit. Uh, we did it at the back end of last year and um, we were delighted uh, to get it done. It was a real leap forward for us um, and we did it with the support of the local community down there and the Harbour Master in Kilmore Key was essential to allow us to, to, to drag our towed arrays uh, through the water um, without any of the fishing gear implications. Um, but I suppose we're mainly focused on our, our main uh, area that we work in. Uh, next slide please, Michelle. Um, is the offshore wind farm. So, so we've been working over in the UK since 2015 uh, with uh, then EON and now RWE uh, and we complete um, condition service and ad hoc pre and post intervent intervention service for them on their fleet of offshore wind farms. So last year we finished, uh, we did some, we did condition surveys at Rampion, which is their new site off the south coast just off Brighton. Um, and we also did uh, a service at Humber Gateway um, and um, and Robin Rig, obviously. Um, so we've had to we've had to really upgrade our our data processing and our data storage facilities, and we did that with the help of AWS and our association here in the Port of Shed. Um, and just uh, we just finished delivering um, the reports chart and data for the 2021 20, condition survey up at Robin Rig. Uh, which is up in the north west of uh, England, up at Whitehaven and Workington. So that's what we're into. Uh, looking forward to bringing more services to, to our lovely clients uh, as the year progresses. Um, thanks to Liam, thanks to everybody uh, of iHubs uh, for facilitating us. That's brilliant. Thanks, Finn, for that really interesting uh, capability there. And as people will know, within Enterprise Ireland, we've been working on offshore wind for quite a while now. Um, and what we're trying to do is get as many Irish companies as possible into the UK market with a view to bringing that capability back home um, when the Irish Sea projects begin to kick off. Um, so uh, we're going to move on to Air Composites. Mark McGee. Uh, Mark, floor is yours, sir. Thanks, Liam. Um, uh, uh, if you could just share. Thanks, Michelle. Um, 
So yeah, you can move on to the, the next slide and we'll start the next one. So uh, about us, so Air Composites, we're a composite manufacturer uh, uh, and testing business um, out in Inverin, uh in the Gwaeltucht. Uh, so we, um, we're we primarily uh, uh, a uh, uh, composite manufacturer in aerospace space renewable energy and the marine industries we um uh we split our business between um uh build to print uh, uh and serial production of uh of parts for those industries and uh the the probably the other half of our business is uh engineering services which is includes a lot of research and development um mm -hmm. uh and and being uh either coordinators or partners on research and development projects uh probably more more so in uh, renewable energy um, than, than any of the rest of them. So uh, next slide, please, uh, Michelle. Um, so one of the reasons that, that that makes us a really interesting partner for that is uh, that because we're doing all this serial production, we need to have a lot of equipment, and uh, having that equipment uh, uh, can be quite uh, handy to uh, to, to people, companies that are trying to do new and innovative stuff. So we've got um, some large autoclaves up to about six meter by two point five meter capacity. We've got a six meter five axis CNC machine, which is um, uh, uh, very handy for manufacturing molds and uh, and the likes and we have a 16 meter by five meter by five meter oven as well so um we, there's a lot of stuff we can do in a lot of ways we can help that way so next slide michelle please um so renewable energy uh, manufacturing um, is uh, is a, a, a big part of our business. So we've done serial production of blades up to uh, 14 meters, V29 size blades, um, and then for smaller six and 15 kilowatt uh, uh, devices. Um, then we've also manufactured uh, blades as part of projects. So we've done the eight meter uh, tidal turbine blade that Jamie shared in his presentation that was tested in NUIG. Um, and we try and um, uh, combine our research and development activities with uh, and align them with uh, the commercial needs of, of, of some of our customers and partners. So uh, next slide, please, Michelle. So some of the serial marine production that we we do just to, uh, to mention, so we do uh, small catamarans uh, out of a recyclable polypropylene and glass fibre material. So they're um, uh, a lot of those uh, end up in France in sailing schools. So we've been doing that since 2009 and it's a it's a stable part of our business um, uh, and it's a really uh, uh, interesting part. So next slide, please, Michelle. Um, we have been involved in some research and development projects uh, uh, around the marine industry. Seaboat is just wrapping up this year. It was a 1.6 million euro Horizon 2020 project. Um, a with the aim to produce a zero emissions uh, uh, boat, our part of the project was to use our own patented uh, composite powder epoxy technology, um, which is a novel process for manufacturing uh, and uh, composite uh, items with using uh, epoxy and powder and glass fiber. Um, the real advantage of it is that you can co-cure and you don't need to glue the sub-elements together. So uh, we made the hull using that uh, technology. And um, what we're finding is this allows us to to qualify us for more commercial opportunities. So this has led, this and other uh, projects that we qualified and used uh, this material on has helped us win um, business very recently to uh, manufacture retractable bow foils for a Norwegian company. They're six meter bow foils. Um, they're about three tons each. And without the ability to co-cure uh, the sub elements together and get the shear loads uh, that the, the 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 greater shear load capability because of doing that it would have been very difficult to realize these products and composites by just gluing them together so um uh, that's what we try and do with our r d is uh uh you know qualify us to to get involved in in commercial projects so next slide please michelle um so like as i said i think we're on 12 horizon 2020 projects at the moment i know for the company uh we're somewhere between 25 and 30 million um uh, of access to that level of research funding over the last 20 years um uh and and i guess a multiple of that for projects that we've uh, we've been involved in um we do some stuff with the european space agency as well um so next slide please um Michelle. yeah so One just minute, some select minute, please mark 
Okay, some selected R&D projects, uh, 2.7 million were a coordinator for uh, uh, Powder Blade, which was the blade that Jamie tested, which was uh, using the powder epoxy technology for larger turbine blades. Uh, Seaboat, which I talked about, also Flowtech, which was the eight meter tidal blade you can see in the bottom right corner. Um, uh, and that was the, the, the one that uh, was tested in UAG also. So next slide, please, Michelle. Um, and ESA, uh, the lattice structure, which again is uh, maybe some would say not relevant for the marine industry, but that structure was manufactured to, uh, it, it, it was just under 1500 uh, grams and it was tested to 17 tons, the lattice structure in the top right corner. So again, it's technology that we see as uh, uh, possible uh, to, to have a possible place in towers and uh, floating wind particularly. So something we're looking at and leap wind, leading edge protection for uh, offshore wind turbines. So next slide, please, Michelle. So they're just some projects that we um, uh, we've been involved in in the past. And we have a wholly owned subsidiary as well, Composites Testing Laboratory, where we do uh, testing at sometimes breadboard, but mainly coupon level for uh, primarily airspace, but also a lot of the larger players in, in the wind industry. So we would uh, we would do quite a bit of testing for LM Wind and Sozon and Siemens Gamesa as well. So we'd uh, we'd hope to, uh, you know, grow on these relationships, particularly as they those companies look um, closer towards the west or more at the west of Ireland um, as as offshore wind uh, accelerates uh, in these parts. Uh, next slide, please. I think that's that's it. Yeah. So that's me. Um, yeah. No, just thanks for having us, uh, Liam. And thanks, Liam and Thurlock and Michelle for organising. Um, uh, we're here. We're out in Inverin. When things uh, open up again, we'd be delighted to welcome anyone out for a visit and you know reach out if there's any way we can help at all and um again thanks for organizing we're very lucky i think to have such a, a an accessible network in the west of ireland mark that's great thank you very much for that um really interesting stuff there you see that theme of, of offshore wind emerging in so many uh, people's presentations today um it, it, you know i've been I've been in the marine business for 30 plus years, and this is the single greatest opportunity I think we've ever seen in Ireland in the marine sector. Um, and we need to grab it with both hands. So yeah, that's great. Um, moving on to our final uh, industrial presenter, Wood PLC. And we've got Brian O'Keefe there from Wood. Uh, Brian, floor is yours, sir. Great, thanks very much. Um, Perfect. So, uh, yeah, as as Lee mentioned, we're uh, Wood PLC, so based out in uh, Parkmore. Um, we have about uh, 100 staff uh, involved in all things offshore and subsea in terms of engineering, data analytics and software engineering. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our, our cables and renewables team, of uh, which I lead uh, in the Galway office. So next slide, please. So in terms of uh, offshore wind, would uh, we provide full life cycle service to offshore wind? So uh, looking at early uh, phase development, site selection, route, uh, cable routing and optimization uh, studies, uh, as well as energy yield assessments uh, through design uh, with feed and, and uh, detailed design. Uh, and then during uh, construction, we're involved in um, on the project management side uh, in terms of coordination of the of construction, but also um, providing representatives offshore during installation activities. On the operate side, we are we're also heavily involved uh, around, uh, particularly around uh, failures, uh, cable failures, and uh, doing root cause assessments, uh, looking at remedial solutions, uh, and then again, uh, when those remedial solutions go to uh, to being constructed, uh, managing uh, those uh, remediation programs. Next slide, please. So we're involved in both fixed and floating wind. Uh, so looking at fixed, our main uh, area of expertise is around the cabling. Uh, so again, the route optimization, uh, export cable routing and landfall selection and design, uh, cable burial risk assessments and installation methodologies. Um, uh, but we also have a local uh, analysis tools for local cross-section modeling of, of cables. Uh, and we do quite a lot uh, around uh, fatigue of uh, the cable structures, uh, particularly at the free spans at the, the connection between the monopile 
uh, or where the cables come out of the bottom of the monopile before they go into burial. Uh, there can often be a scour development around the bottoms of the monopiles leading to dynamic motion of the cables in those areas. So as a result, we also work with uh, cable protection system manufacturers uh, to design systems to, um, to protect the cable in that area. A quick list of some of our uh, uh, recent clients. We work uh, quite a lot with Orsted in, in the UK and, and in Europe. Uh, we also uh, recently or over the last couple of years have been working with Airgrid on the Celtic interconnector uh, between Ireland and France uh, and a couple of um, R&D type projects around cable uh, cross-sectional design uh, for the Carbon Trust. Next slide please. So in floating wind, again, we bring the, the same elements uh, as fixed wind from, from a cable perspective, uh, with the addition of the dynamic cable uh, touching the floater to the, uh, or the connection between the floater and the seabed. Uh, so we do design analysis and specification of the dynamic cable and the ancillary equipment that's required to ensure that it stays, uh, uh, it maintains its integrity through the field life. Uh, but also then we bring in our uh, experience from uh, from oil and gas and from working with the floating structures in terms of the naval architecture area around the hull design, um, structural modeling and looking at stability and global performance. So we, we model both the aerodynamic uh, loading on the turbines, the hydrodynamic loading on the structures, uh, and then look at it from a, from a structural uh, viewpoint, structural performance uh, assessment. Uh, added to that, then we do the mooring systems, so the uh, design and specification of the mooring systems for floating uh, uh, turbines. Just two projects uh, to mention there, uh, two Irish projects that we're working on at the moment. Uh, we're supporting Simply Blue uh, doing a pre-feed for the Western Star project off the west coast of Ireland, uh, looking at the hull and mooring and, and dynamic cables there. And we're also working with DP Energy on the Inishalga floating wind off the south coast of Ireland uh, for cable routing and uh, landfall assessment. So that's it for me. Nice, quick and short for as the last person up. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, really interesting to see what you guys are doing. Um, I suppose you bring an additional dimension to um, the size of companies in, in this space. Um, that's great. Listen, uh, I'm going to very quickly wrap up because we, we, we're over time, but not too badly. Um, I see uh, some really interesting emerging um, trends there. Um, we're looking at, at things like wind. Offshore wind has, is, is really beginning to come to the fore in terms of, of both infrastructure in the ports and, and R&D capability and even companies like Finns doing, doing work in the UK. It, it's fantastic to see, um, you know, we need to strengthen that capability uh, and both from an Irish context in the term in terms of getting the greatest possible local content to supply chain for those projects, but also in terms of being able to build a future export industry as well. Um, Marine bioeconomy and, and areas like seaweed, really interesting, um, probably a not very underutilized resource and, and one that we need to, to kind of, again, get to grips with. Uh, great to see the Park Namara facility being developed out. Um, so, yeah, that looked really good thing. Um, I think what really struck me was the level of innovative capability of the companies we've seen around the Galway area. Um, you know, fantastic to see that that R&D capability and, and people, you know, really getting to grips with new technologies and, and new capability. Um, so in terms of, of further events, we will do another virtual event, a marine industry, a Marine Ireland industry network event, um, probably another couple of months time. And then hopefully in Q4, uh, when everybody's vaccinated and we're all sorted, we'll be able to get together face to face. And I think in terms of a network that that's, there's real value in actually being able to you know, meet people face to face. I think everybody's fairly sick of teams at this stage. Um, we uh, have a couple, uh, well, we have an event coming up, which is uh, uh, of note, we'll be putting up a, an invite uh, to this event shortly on the website. This has been organized by the Dutch Embassy and it's on the 15th and 16th of June. Um, the Dutch uh, want to showcase Dutch capability in offshore wind, but they also want to bring in Irish companies uh, and, and showcase their capability to the Dutch counterparts. 
Um, so that one's a, a real opportunity um, for people who are in the offshore wind industry uh, to engage with some key Dutch players. And as you probably know, if you're involved in that industry, the Dutch have some very significant companies there, the likes of Van Or, Buscalis, Demi, um, Seaway 7 and so on. Those are tier one contractors in the offshore wind industry um, and, and will be critical in terms of the development of, of projects in the Irish Sea first, but then subsequently the floating projects uh, in the Celtic Sea and, and Atlantic coast. Um, so we will have that up on the website shortly, 15th and 16th of June. Um, so that, that's an important one. Uh, as always, uh, we have the facility to showcase events. We have facility to showcase news. Um, do please send us your, your news stories. We, we do love a good marine industry, good news story. Um, an example of that, and I have to send it on to the guys in, in, on the website, is Farah Marine, who are a startup in the space. They've just... Uh, they just uh, finished the CTV um, ready for launch in, in a yard in Indonesia. That CTV will be going to work in the UK industry uh, in the short term, but subsequently coming to Ireland. So um, that's the kind of great new story we, we love to show and showcase on the website. Uh, major thank you to all our presenters today. Um, thank you very much, guys. You were great um, and stuck to time. Um, so thanks very much for that. Um, as always, keep the stuff coming into the website. Have a look at the website. Um, send us material for it. It keeps it vibrant, keeps it going, um, and provides uh, a showcase both for Irish companies um, to national players, but also to international players. We do see an increasing amount of traffic from overseas, um, so it's important to to keep the profile going there. Um, with that, um, I'm going to say uh, good luck and, and thank you to everybody. In particular, thank you to Michelle and Turlock in iHub who uh, did the technology for us. It worked seamlessly and um, yeah, thanks very much, guys. So to everybody, take care. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, it's been a great session. Um, if you have any Q&A questions that you want, do send them to us and we will um, we'll happily respond to them offline. Okay. Take care, everybody, and good luck.